In a previous video that you can find in the description, I explained how we can install Android Studio and the virtual device. In this video, I will show you how we can create a simple Android application. So here I have already an opened project, so let's close it. So let's go to file, then close project. And from this window, we can click on this button to create a new project. So here I want to create an empty project because I want to show you how we can add the activity to this project. That's why I will select no activity, then let's click on next. Here this application, I will just call it Android application. And of course, I will use the Java language to create this application. Now let's click on finish. Now the project has been created, but it is empty. So we need to add a new activity. And the activity in Android is the application window. And to create an activity, we need two files, the Java class and the resource file. So here to create a new activity, we have to click on file. Of course, we have to select app, then let's go to file, then new. And here let's create a new activity. And of course, I want to select empty activity. So this activity, I will just call it main activity and I will not uh, select this box because I want to show you how we can create a layout file. Also, this is the first activity. So it should be the launcher activity and the launcher activity is the activity that will appear when we start the application. So we should be sure to have at least one launcher activity, otherwise no activity will appear when we start the application. Also, I will create this activity using the Java language, so I have to select Java here, and now let's click on finish. This activity has been created and it only contains this onCreate method. So the onCreate is the entry point of the activity, which means that when we start the activity, the onCreate method will be executed. So everything we need to execute when we start the activity should be created and should be written in the onCreate method. Now this activity has been created, but we need also the layout file. And the layout file is a resource file that has the type layout. It allows us to create the user interface of our activity. So let's add a new layout file. So we have to select app, then file, then new. And as I said, the layout file is a resource file. So we need to select Android resource file. And here the name convention is to provide the layout file with a name that is the reverse of the activity file name. So if the activity is called main activity, then the layout file should be activity main. Also, it is an XML file, but we don't need to provide the extension because Android Studio will complete the extension for us. Also, the resource type is layout, so we have to select layout. And here, it is better to use a linear layout as the layout manager because the linear layout is easier to use. So I will write linear layout. So the linear layout ha has been suggested. Let's select it. And now let's click on OK. Now the layout file has been created and as you can see here, the designer contains several areas. So in this area, we have the different views that we can add to this interface, to this user interface. Here we have the different views that we have already added to the user interface. And in this area, we have the different attributes of the selected view. So if I select this view, I will have here the different attributes of this selected view. And in this area, we have the interface that we are creating. So here, as you can see, we have two interfaces. We have the design interface and we have the blueprint. It is better to hide the blueprint because we don't really need it. So to hide this blueprint, we have just to click on this button. Then we have to select design. Also, we can click on this button to make the interface more clear. 
Now let's add some views to this interface. So first of all, let's add a text view. And let's modify the text of this text view by modifying the attribute text. So here in this text, I want to write first name. Now let's add an edit text to this interface. So the edit text is available in the text group and it is called plain text. So let's add it. And for this edit text, I want it to be empty. So let's go to the text attribute and let's make it empty. Also, I want to provide an ID for this edit text because I want to access it from the Java code. So I will call it ET for edit text first name. Let's hit enter and let's click on a refactor. Now let's add a new text view and let's modify the text of this text view. So I will write last name. Now let's add a new edit text. So let's select plain text and let's drag and drop it here. Of course, I want the text to be empty. So let's make the text attribute empty. And also, I want to provide an ID for this edit text because I want to modify it and to read it from the Java code. So I will call it ET for edit text last name. Let's click on a refactor. Now let's add a new text view in the middle. So let's select a text view and let's add it. But here, as you can see, the text view is not in the middle. So to make it in the middle of this interface, we have to add some spaces. So we can find the space view in the layouts group. So let's add first space just above the text view. So I can drop it just here or here. So for the moment, this space is not taking any space. So to allow it to take the available space, I have just to modify the layout weight attribute. And here, let's write one. So one for the moment means all the available space because only this space has a weight. So to make this text view in the middle, we have to add a new space. So let's select a new space and let's add it just after the text view. So for the second space, I will provide it with a layout weight equal to one. And like this, the two spaces will share the available space. And as you can see here, this text view is now in the middle. So for this text view, I will modify the text and I want it to be empty because I will modify it from the Java code. Also, I will provide an ID for this text view because I want to access it from the Java code. So I will call it TV for text view. Welcome. Now let's click refactor. Now let's add two buttons at the end of this interface. So the two buttons, I want to add them horizontally. That's why I will add a linear layout with the horizontal orientation. But for the moment, this linear layout is taking all the available space. This is because it has a layout high equal to much parent. But this is not a problem for the moment. Let's add the two buttons. Let's select buttons. Then let's add the first button. Now let's add the second button. Now after adding these two buttons, let's select the linear layout, which is this one. And let's modify the layout height. So let's provide it with the value wrap content, which means that this linear layout will take enough high for the two buttons that it contains. Now let's select the first button and let's modify the text. So for the text, I want it to be OK. Also, I will modify the ID of this button because I want to access it from the Java code. So let's call it BTN. OK. Let's click refactor. Now let's select the second button and let's modify the text. So for the text, it will be exit. Also, let's modify the ID. It will be BTN exit. Let's click refactor. 
Now that we created this layout file, it is possible to switch between the user interface and the source code. So we can click on code to view the XML code and we can click on design to view the user interface. Now let's go to main activity and here as I said on create is the entry point of this activity which means that what we write inside on create will be executed when we start the activity. So the first thing that we have to do is to display the interface of the layout file into this activity. So let's add the method set content view and we have to provide the name of the layout file without the extension. Of course, we have to start with R, which stands for resource layout, which is the type of our layout file. And this is the layout file without the XML extension. Now what we have to do is to read the two buttons because we want to add a listener to these two buttons. So let's do this. Let's start with the first button. So this statement allows us to get the button from the layout file. But as you can see, we have an error here because the button class has not been imported. So to import it, we have just to click ALT enter and it will be imported. And uh, as you can see, it is just available here. Now let's add a listener to this button. Of course, we have to import the view class, so let's click ALT enter. And when the user clicks on the OK button, we have to execute a method called say hello. Of course, this method is not defined, so let's implement it. Now, when the user clicks on the OK button, we want to read the text of the first edit text and the text of the second edit text. Then we want to modify the text of the text view. So let's do this. So here we start by reading the first edit text, the second edit text, and the text view. And then we get the text of the first edit text using get text and to string in order to convert this object to a string. Then we read the text of the second edit text using the same statement. And finally, we use the method setText in order to set the text of the welcome text view. Now let's read the exit button and let's add a listener to it. So we have to go to onCreate and here we have just to read the exit button and to add a listener to this button. So let's do this. Now when the user clicks on the exit button, just we have to call the exit method so it is system.exit now let's test this application so we have to start the virtual device so let's open AVD manager and let's click on this button now we can close this window and we have to wait for the virtual device to appear now the virtual device is ready so let's start the application so we should be sure to select the good virtual device and let's click on this run button. Now the application has started, so let's provide the first name, let's say Bill. And for the last name, let's say Gates. So let's click on the OK button and this is the welcome text. If I click on exit, the application will be stopped and even this button will become disabled so let's wait and as you can see it is now disabled also it is possible to start the application from the virtual device so let's go to the list of the available applications and our application is this one so let's click on it to start it and as you can see this is the application so let's click on exit to exit it In the next video, I will show you how to create a simple Android application with multiple activities. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the channel.